Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to tonight's webinar here at Blackstar HQ. Uh, I'm Steve Marks, the product trainer for the UK. And tonight we've got a very special guest with us, Mr. Jamie Humphreys. Good evening, everybody. Uh, everybody knows Jamie's face, I'm sure, from working with Blackstar and many other things along the way. Um, so tonight, really, we're looking at um, Blackstar's heritage products um, being Artisan and Series 1. And tonight we're just going to really kind of try and put it back at the forefront of everyone's minds because it's uh, we've got a lot of artists that use both products and uh, it really is uh, both a fantastic sounding amplifiers. Um, so I guess really the, the best place to start uh, is Artisan, which was the first product to really hit the marketplace for, for Blackstar along with RHT valve pedals. And um, I remember working in a store at the time and uh, when I first heard an Artisan 30, which is the, uh, the amp I'm currently plugged into, an Artisan 30 combo uh, with a, a HT drive pedal. Um, I remember thinking at the time I couldn't stop smiling because of the sound and the tone. And uh, that became known widely, especially in the UK, for the, the Black Star smile, as uh, our sales, worldwide sales manager would put it, Keith. Um, but really, when everybody heard Artisan, they knew that Black Star the company meant business. Um, really, it's a, it's a hand-wired boutique product. Um, it really is the highest level of craftsmanship um, and with an emphasis on simplicity but sonic purity. So it's a great clean sounding product but also you can get some great just on the edge sounds if you really crank it. So it's kind of like a, Pete Townsend and Angus Young mixed together in a, in a blender, if you like. It sounds very, very cool. Um, and obviously, it's a match made in heaven for our, for our valve pedals. Um, series 1 came shortly after Artisan. Um, you've got a little bit more versatility as far as valves are concerned. With the Artisan, it's all EL34 valves. Uh, series 1, the majority is EL34. Um, we've got a 6L6 option as well, which... Uh, We'll get Jamie to, to run tonight for us as well. But, um, I mean, Jamie's actually used both widely, haven't you, buddy? I mean, you've, yeah. you've used them on tour many times, both. Yeah, I did, um, I did a few uh, tours out in Sweden, and um, the, the tours that I were doing, they were a, it was a Queen tribute tour. Uh, it wasn't anything associated with We Will Rock You or, or anything like that. Um, and... Uh, Obviously, on on that tour, there were there are kind of signature tones that you're that you're trying to recreate, course, yeah. and obviously, you know, playing the Brian May guitar is gonna is gonna really kind of help that. Um, the first time I went out and did the initial shows, I used um, a, a, an Artisan Thirty combo, and cool. uh, I used one of the the boost pedals in front of it. So, right. uh, which cool. was a nice combination of, I've, I've always been a fan of, of uh, as uh, Keith always laughs, I call it the blue boost. You know, I've always, always really liked that pedal anyway. Yeah, it's a great pedal, yeah. And um, I, used, I used it on the, the, the first sort of performances that we did and it, was, it would work great. It was a great sounding amp and uh, pedal combination. But then the next time we had uh, performing at Hyde Park and uh, there was a lot of other artists on that day. So it was a bit of a, the gear on a, Sure. On a you know roll on roll off sort of thing. So I tr again I went for simplicity, but I ended up actually using an Artisan thirty uh, watt head and uh, a four by twelve with the uh, with the the dual pedal, and that was cool. that was that was a killer sounding setup. Again, really really natural as as you say, really sort of pure. Um, just a chorus pedal the, and the and the dual pedal. And yeah. yeah, just sounded great. Stunning. Yeah. And I saw you on the on the anthems tour with Brian May and Kerry Ellis in, mm. in Birmingham that time, and you were using Series One then. Yeah, it was um, obviously sort of being involved with Black Star and and having the relationship that I've had with Black Star since God, this I think this is my sixth year yeah. of of now playing the equipment. I've, I'm obviously quite spoiled in the fact that you know you you get the opportunity to play everything, and you know if you want want to try something out and. Uh, I was doing the um, the Frankfurt show, and uh, there was some uh, additions to the the uh, um, to the Series One range, and I'd always used this amp. Um, I'd I'd used the two hundred watt on gigs, uh, but for the the style of playing that I play, it was a little bit it was a little bit too much for me. 
and I'd used um, the 45 watt combo and really loved the voicing of the 45 watt combo yeah, and I still cut, use it cuts that. through man yeah yeah sounds killer so when I saw the the 50 watt head um, I instantly fell in love yeah. and uh, because of the, the size of the tour, because we were doing, there were some bigger venues and um, obviously the nature of it was, you know, kind of gear in, gear out, night sure. after night, I decided to go with a rack system for my effects yeah. and um, one of the things that I wanted to be able to do was have a stereo setup and have certain effects in an effects loop, which obviously, you know, with, with the Series 1, you've, you've got some slightly more modern features. Yeah, yeah. So my choruses and my delays were in the effects loop. Yeah. And then um, having the two of them, I would basically send from uh, my, my send effects, well, sorry, send from my master amp, if you like, sure. into, the, uh, into the, the input of, the, of, of the, uh, the send effects, and then come out of the output in stereo and go to the return of both heads. Wow. So I was using the preamp and power amp of one head, and I was just using the power stage of the other. Two heads, two cabs. And, and you had them on two twelves, yeah? Yeah, I had two twelves, and... I've got to say, it looked smart on stage. Man. Oh, the wicked. Yeah, yeah it looked it, absolutely yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and also the other... The, 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 a few gigs, the, sort of the rack was there, but other ones it was kind of tucked out of the way, and yeah. you just had the, the, the two heads and the cabs. And the other great thing was... Um, I was using a, a Swiss chin system, nothing custom built. It was all, you know, off the shelf stuff, but it just meant that on the floor on my board, I had a volume pedal um, with a tuner from the tuner out of the volume pedal. Yeah. And I had my controller board. And the great thing is, is because these, these uh, heads are MIDI, I could yeah. do. I could hit one switch on my on my board, and it would root any pedals. So my boosters and stuff were in the rack. Yeah, amazing. Um, it would root that. It would change patches on my MIDI gear, and it would also select the different modes on the heads as well. So, yeah. So I mean, coming back to what you just said, I mean that the heads are a very modern design, but it's also very traditional on the front panel. Mm. You've got your clean channels. Usually, there's two voicings: clean, bright, and clean, warm. Clean, bright for that kind of class A boutique and the warm for a more full-bodied, modern, clean sound. And then you usually, you've usually got crunch, super crunch, and in some cases, overdrive one and overdrive two. So there's so much versatility there. And I think that's why a lot of, I mean, generally Black Star Series 1 stuff gets put in that metal bracket, mm. doesn't it? But you get people like the Rascal Flats mm. using Series 1, uh, the Luke Bryan Band in Nashville, right over to you know, Dimmu Borger in Norway doing the darkest metal. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it really fits in with a lot of genres, and that's the beauty. And on the back, like you said, you've got mm. your effects loop, emulated, emulated line yeah, yeah. Um, loads of cab options. Mm. But like, I just and MIDI is... Yeah, but the, the, like I said, all of those, with the MIDI thing for me was just the selling point, because yeah, yeah. with my previous amps, I'd always had to... I could use the switching system, but it was always like... I had to use loops out of my switching system to be able to, sure. to, to do the channel switching. It was complicated. Time, yeah, it was one. It was a MIDI lead. That was it. Yeah. And the the other thing that you know I I want to point out to to to, to people watching, I I've always favoured fifty watt heads, and um, if you're looking for something that you know you want to up, upgrade your rig, you want to get an amp that's you know, got a wide variety of sounds, and we'll obviously we'll demonstrate some sounds in a moment. The other thing I love about this is the fact that it's got the, like we said, the emulated out on the back of it. Yeah. So if you're doing like a little gig, and you want to just get a little bit of spill out the front, or a big gig, <laughs> any gig, um, <laughs> you know, you can just you can just come out of the emulated out and go into the uh, into the PA. But also, if you're at home, you know, and you're getting that black star sound that you love when you're on stage, and when you get home, you know, whatever your your kind of uh, living uh, situation is, you know, late at night, it's not always ideal to have a 50 watt head cranked up in your house. So you can actually run these amps on standby. So uh, without a cab plugged in and you can go straight into your sound card or a mixer or whatever, and you can get great DI'd guitar sounds as yeah, well. Yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. And it's silent, you know, you can be wearing a set of headphones. Even if it's plugged into the cab, if you switch it to standby, it mutes the cab, which is great. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're, they're dual patent as well, which if you don't know much about what that is, to get a patent on a product, an the easiest thing to do, and Series 1 have two. ISF, of course, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, our infinite shape feature, so we can get more of a, an American tighter sound right through to a more kind of open British sound. And you can really find that, that sound that you're looking for as 
the sand in your head is what Black Star is all about, really. Um, and also DPR, dynamic power reduction, uh, which is uh, it's a a lot of people think it's a power soak, but it's mm. not. It changes the voltage to your power tubes, so it's not affecting any tonal characteristics of your sound, is yeah. it? So you can get the the sound of 10% of what the amps achievable. So with the 50 head, you'll get you know a five watt, you know. Um, but it's, it's it's interesting. You mentioned the DPR and that people always go, oh, it's got it has power reduction. You know, it's it's just another. For me, I see it as another kind of tonal feature. Um, if I go onto the warm clean, this is one of my favourite settings. Is to go onto the warm clean, and I've got the gain cranked all the way up, and I've got the ISF um, sort of more into the to the British side of things. Yeah. And then I've got the DPR drop right the way down to five watts. Um, I'm not using very high output pickups on this guitar. These are very very low output. Um, I'm not one of those guys that likes to drive the front end of the amp. I want to be able to get the amp doing some business and then drop the volume down. But if I, I'm on a clean sound, I'll, I'll just uh, turn the delay off. It's almost like the amp is just starting to, yeah. to, uh, to break up. At low volumes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, which is a great tool for recording as well, mm. man. Yeah, and uh, moving on, if I select the, the, the bright clean, then you're more... more of a... If I go onto a single coil sound... Like you were saying before, Steve, that a lot of people tend to put the series one into the sort of category of being very metal yeah it, it does everything yeah yeah it does everything it's i mean a lot of black star product does do that you, you got to really check it out and for any of you guys that work in stores um a very cool thing to do with the series one when you're demoing and i found out recently this works very well for me in the uk is to demo it first of all for a customer at low volumes because when you've got a really high gain setting and the master down and you're adjusting the dynamic power reduction, the DPI, you can really feel uh, a lot of resonance kicking in. It's not just a volume uh, squelch, if you like. Uh, it's a really good thing to show a customer because at loud levels, when they're not used to it, it's very hard to distinguish what's going on. Um, but for a pro guy, then they would. But at low volumes, anybody can tell what's happening to the, the kind of dynamic push that you're giving the amp, taking it from five watts to 50 watts, for example. Um, Coming back to the Artisan, really, I mean, it is very, very basic. You can see I've got a little patch cable here blending two channels together, so you get that um, really uh, so much tonal variety for, for uh, two channels to be blended. You can go from a very warm, clean, which I'm currently, I'm in the Artisan 30 currently. <laughs> Cranked on my volume, maybe on a, a like a humbucker. I can really dig in and get that EL84 compressed, bouncy tone. It's just phenomenal. And when you put a pedal through the front, it's great for you guys out there that enjoy your distortions and your overdrive pedals. Um, there's no send and return on Artisan. It is very classic. It's simplicity is old school isn't it yeah. um, there's a really cool feature on a lot of the products as well with artisan it's like a bass response so you can increase the and get more modern bass re response from very vintage bass responses as well but um <laughs> what, uh, i mean i've currently got a, a, one of our ht distortions going through so this is the kind of sound that i first heard when i first heard a black star so you can get a real good idea of that so <laughs> smooth singing distortion it's just a stunning setup to have and I mean some of the artists that use artisan you know people like um, Manic Street Preachers, James Dean Bradfield, um, Richie Sambora uses an artisan, uh, the 1975 who are currently making a lot of noise uh, on the scene um, it's a great sought after product for a lot of artists out there and uh, definitely worth checking out because artisan is really coming back into the market again um, so, I mean, let's hear Jamie crank some, some sounds through the 50 and then we'll maybe move to the 6L6 to give you an idea of what that's going to achieve, really.
Um, well, at the moment, I'll go on to the, the uh, crunch setting. So, um, and also I should point out, um, because uh, I'm such a coward, I have to have a bit of delay. <laughs> and uh, you know, just to make things <laughs> make things nice and easy, basically. Um, and uh, the delay pedal that I'm using at the moment is an HT delay. It's a Black Star delay. This is um, uh, um, it has a valve within it, an HT uh, it's a, an HT HT circuit. And um, the cool thing about that is, at the moment, I've got there's a there's a saturation control which I've got pretty much off because I'm using a linear, linear delay, which is a digital delay. So I want it very pure, as you can hear. It's a nice uh, kind of quite a hi-fi sort of sound. But if I went on to use, you know, maybe a tape echo, I could push the saturation up and you'd start to get, the, the valve would start to overdrive and you get a bit more compression and a bit more uh, degradation to the sound of the tails of the delay. So it's, yeah, you know, we're not here today to, to, um, uh, to discuss the pedals, but it's, uh, I think it's worth a, a, a little, a little mention and a little bit of love because, uh, um, it really is a very, very versatile pedal. So, um, moving on, I'm using, um, I'll, I'll, I'll turn my safety net off because otherwise people will be going, turn the delay off. Um, we can get, uh, obviously I got that crunch sound. I, I, I had my clean sound where it was just kind of, um, on the edge. On the edge. What I'll do actually, I, I suppose I better just go back. I'm going to drop the gain down. Um, and so I've got a bit more headroom. So out of my cleans. Really hear your, uh, that old school kind of boutique. As soon as I engage the warm clean um, uh, button on the front here, obviously all of this can be done with a foot switch that comes with the amplifier or if you're using any form of MIDI board or if you've got any kind of floor mounted multi effects unit that you like to use, you can operate all of the modes, uh, the channels and the modes with, with that board. You don't have to have the foot switch as well. Um, if I go from that bright clean and now push in the warm clean, you can hear we've got a much more of a, a, a kind of a scooped tone stack. So there's a bit more bottom end and top end um, accentuation. So if I, if I go, let's do that again. Here it's really uh, warmed up. If I go onto the neck. rich yeah, clean sound not many amps out there that will give you two cleans no no and i've I, you know i'm literally just switching you know the, the the controls on the front i'm not adjusting any of the, the tone controls and you can do that on a gig you know you can go from that sort of almost sort of old beatles kind of uh, very thin sounding uh class a yeah, yeah. to having a nice kind of rich more yeah, modern clean tone. Yeah. Onto the crunch, um, I backed off a bit of the gain here, and I can get a, a crunch sound that kind of picks off, picks up from where we left off when we, when we were pushing the, the crunch, clean. Yeah. yeah, so. that almost sort of pseudo Angus Young sort of sound out of it. I can push the gain control up and get that more saturated. So it's starting to sound a little bit more hot rodded. Yeah. And then if I go onto the super crunch, now we're getting a lot more saturation. <laughs> I actually did it live um, <laughs> and uh, just one other thing um, obviously the, the kind of sounds that I like it's because I'm getting old <laughs> I'm turning into me oh, I fell, fell off the end I'm turning into me dad um, <laughs> it's all going wrong now it was all sensible a moment ago if I turn the ISF control round 
more into the American side and push the gain and pull out a little bit of mid. I know I'm not going to go too mad on that because that seems to be a little bit too 90s now to have too much mid taken out. But you can hear, even with the lower output pickups... <laughs> Push a little bit more top end into it. Yeah. You can really hear that it's it's got more totally a more, more, more American yeah, tone. Yeah, yeah, much more American tone. So we've gone with this one head from getting sort of pseudo sixties Beatles kind of clean jangly or your jangly indie sort of thing to modern warm clean to the kind of uh, old school ACDC sort of crunch, slightly more saturated to really quite sort of full on sort yeah. of sound. Um, should point out as well um, that this is, uh, this is EL34s in this amp as well. Yeah, so I mean, just a quick run on the products, um, artisan wise, we've got a couple of combos, a 15 <coughs> watt and a 30 watt. Um, the 30 being switchable as well, so you can lower the wattage on this one down to, down to like 10 watts, which is pretty cool. Um, a 30 head, 100 head, and then we've got, of course, 2 by 12 cabs, 4 by 12 cabs. With the Series 1, only the one combo, so we've got a Series 145. Uh, and then we've got the 50 head, the 100 head, the 200 head as well, which we haven't got here this evening, but that's killer. Um, and then, of course, the 100 watt 6L6, and we've got the, the Gus G signature as well. But, um, yeah, definitely more of a modern modern thing going on with uh, with Series 1, but have we plugged into the uh, 6L6 now? Yeah, yeah cool. just cool. while, while you were chatting, I did. Yeah. So for a, an alteration, the 6L6 valves are more of a common valve that you'd see in an American yeah. amp. Um, so there's quite a lot more headroom there for the cleans, but definitely for the high gains, it really works well to get that, uh, that metal American sound. I can't, I as soon as I turn that on, just want to, uh, it's done that. Yeah. It's, done that. it's, got it's a, very pure. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's automatically got more of a of a sort of a a, a tighter bottom end. Yeah. To it, um, that was the, the this amp's got this is quite full on. Um, Probably Steve, you you you'll probably have to correct me on some sure, of this because sure. I haven't played one of these in a while. We've almost got like uh, we've got our clean uh, section here, our clean channel, which again has another. There's a little controller in the middle here, which gives us our bright clean. So again, with this head, I can get that very sort of class A sort of uh, a slightly thinner, more boutique sound. Um, I believe that that was voiced. Similar to a to an artisan, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? totally, um, yeah. And then if we push in the 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 warm clean control now, we've gone to that more modern sound. And then we've got a crunch channel here, and uh, I'll leave that button out. Uh, we've got uh, we've got two rows of EQ. So basically, this is this is like that part of the amp. And then we've got another set, uh, another row of EQ here uh, because we've got the um, we've got OD1 and OD2, so it's incredibly versatile in terms of we we can start to match. Um, you know, I can get a rhythm. <laughs> If I push this control in the middle, little, little button in the middle here, we now get a super crunch. So this is still the crunch channel. And then we can kind of match that when we go down to OD1, yeah. I believe, isn't that correct? But it starts to push, uh, someone's been Someone's been naughty. They've got the gain all the way up. <laughs> oh, and the bass is up, and the yeah, we know what's been going on here. <laughs> um, so uh, here's our uh, our OD one. That's starting to 
starting to get more saturated. And then we got OD2, which is just uh, really saturated. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, lots going on. Again, DPR, dynamic power reduction. Incidentally, you were running that at 10 watts then. Yeah. 10 watts to the power tubes, amazing. So much tone for that. So yeah, not much you can't do with that really. No, no. That, uh, this, that's the thing, you know, the, I, I sort of, um, I own three of these. That's, I like them. Um, and I sort of get very settled with this as, as um, so who was I, I was having this conversation with earlier on, actually. Um, I, no, it, duh, it was us. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> not only do you uh, do I start liking more classic tones, but I had just had a senior moment there with my brain. So um, when we were talking earlier on, a lot of my recording that I've been doing uh, yeah. recently, um, I've moved away a little bit from the HT5 and I've been doing more stuff using this amp at home. But it's funny, you know, you... I love this amp, and then all of a sudden I play that, I think, ooh, hang on a minute, you know. Yeah, it's just great tones, man. Very, very cool. Uh, I mean, we're, just before we leave you this evening, um, we, uh, we've got a new product coming out, and you may have seen some YouTube clips, and uh, it was released at uh, NAMM in LA uh, two or three weeks ago, and uh, it's called the ID Core. And really, it's, uh, it's entry-level price points, Little practice amps, there's three in the range, but they're all uh, stereo speakers, full range speakers. And we've got six voices and um, 12 effects, studio quality effects. You can store voices and connect it to your, you know, your DAW, record direct via USB. It works with Insider software, which is currently available for the ID series. Really, really cool product. It's going to be hitting stores in around about a month's time. And uh, it won best product at NAMM, which is no easy task really and that's very very cool news for us um, so we, I'm just going to play a little bit through there and then we'll end on a on a jam and we'll let uh, Jamie choose whichever head he's going to go through and we'll, we'll uh, we've gone back to the 50 <laughs> he's gone back to his favorite 50 yeah um, so hopefully you can see a visual of the the, the front of the amp um, so the differences between this and our ID range uh, the, our initial ID range is there's no true valve power, no TVP. So it really is entry level prices. Um, but everyone I've shown so far on the road have, have been absolutely blown away. Um, so I'm just going to run through some of my presets if that's okay. Um, so yeah. Let's get out of there for a moment. So as I said, there's six voices, but you can also store six. Um, and you can obviously include effects on that as well. So, starting off with a clean warm. And to certain presets that I've done on there, just to accent the super wide stereo, because it really is out of this world when you, when you try it. So, um, that's, a, that's our clean warm, so. Coming back to what we were talking about earlier with Series 1 products, Clean Bright is your boutique uh, thinner sound, so more of a classic sound. And I've got the gain up pushed really hard, so on a single coil sound, and to get that kind of sound out of a, a smaller product is fairly unheard of, so the versatility is still there with, with our core range. Nice reverb on there. Uh, crunch, I've got a nice long delay and also a tremolo to accent some of the, uh, the modulation effects.
singing kind of 80s rock-esque sound. OD1. The delay on this one. Great for the metal guys. And then lastly, a really big multi-tap delay on OD2, um, just to really give you the idea of the super wide stereo. So really, really great product, really excited about it. Um, and it's gonna be in your stores very, very soon at not much cost. So uh, grab one, get into your store as soon as they come in and try it out. But uh, yeah, we'll end on a little bit of a jam. Um, I'll go back into my HT distortion and uh, get myself back up and running. And we'll let Jamie do his thing. Thanks for being here, dude. Thanks for having me, mate. Yeah, no well, I've got to do my thing. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Make something up then.